evening, everyone. I hope we are live. I hope somebody will text me and let me know for sure if I'm live. Uh, looks like my computer might be buffering. So there we are. Maybe we're live now. Uh, I am going to update the prayer list for everyone tonight. Paul has been out of town this week. He's on his way home now. Uh, so I uh, told him I would take care of this part. And then after the prayer list is updated, uh, I'm going to close my part down. And then Joel is going to play the video that Paul recorded earlier this week for his message tonight. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, I know uh, Lauren and uh, baby Natalie are doing well. They can still use some prayers for you. So just keep them in your prayers. Also tonight, we want to remember to keep uh, Angie Oaf in your prayers. She uh, hasn't got a surgery date set yet, but as soon as she does, we'll know. But she wants you to continue to pray uh, that she will not have to have chemo or radiation. We also want to continue to remember uh, David Kidd. Uh, just continue to hold uplift him in your prayers and his family as they go through this. Um, we had um, some good news from Jay. He went and had a stent. I've lost my words here, but anyway, Jay had good results. He doesn't have any blockage, so he's not going to have to any, have anything done. Uh, Savannah Pearson sent in that she had a friend, uh, Becca, that was in an automobile accident earlier this morning and was injured as well as the other driver. So if you will keep them in your prayers. Uh, be with Ryan Spears and his co-workers as they go to Louisiana to uh, work on the damage from the hurricane down there and pray for their families that are still here. Uh, just pray for protection for all of those involved. Uh, Glenita Guthrie has asked that we pray for her granddaughter, Gabby. Uh, she's tested positive for COVID vaccine, or excuse me, for the COVID disease, and she just started at UCA. Uh, so she is in need of some prayers. I know it's hard to, on her and her family, both for her to be sick and not be at home. Merle Christian has asked that we pray for her daughter-in-law, Janice Phillips. Uh, Janice is having reconstruction. She had breast cancer a few years ago, and this will be her eighth reconstruction in two years. So please pray that this goes well, that there's no difficulties with this, and that she'll get the result that she's wanting. Uh, Vicki Bailey has asked us to pray for her sister, Charla. Uh, she had a uh, laparoscopic knee uh, surgery done, and uh, she's had a lot of pain with that. So just continue to lift her in your prayers. Uh, Diane uh, has asked us to pray for April Helton. She's having seizures, and uh, just pray that the uh, doctors will be able to help her with this situation. We have some unspoken prayer requests as well. And um, I was also notified uh, that we can take some people off our prayer list. We can take Joy Noblin off. We can take Laura Jones off. And we can take Joey Barnes off. Uh, those are all the updates that I have that I received today. Uh, please go over your prayer list that we have from Sunday. And we hope to see you in uh, church or on Facebook Live on Sunday morning. Like I said, just uh, bear with us here. This is a new experiment for us. So we're hoping that Joel will be able to post Paul's video live right after I get off of here. Y'all have a good evening and I hope to see you on Sunday. Thank you. Well, good evening, church family. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study via Facebook Live. And I hope that many of you have already joined us. As Becky has been kind enough to take care of our prayer, share time together. I have been away this week in a Bible conference in Dallas, Texas. Uh, one of our church families was so gracious to gift me this opportunity and to be with me there. And... Uh, wasn't sure if I would make it back home in time Wednesday night to do this, so I have recorded this Bible study uh, early, and hopefully everything goes well. Uh, <clears throat> probably already was mentioned, but I want to remind you that this coming weekend is Labor Day weekend, 
We will be having services on Sunday. I know many of you will take advantage of the opportunity to be gone somewhere uh, playing for the long weekend, and I, I hope you have a good time and you stay safe. I hope wherever you are, you'll, you'll take the opportunity to join us on Facebook Live, and if you're close enough uh, where you might be staying, playing, you might be able to come back in for services on that Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to do things differently uh, that Sunday. I believe the date is the 6th. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, you'll have to forgive me. But uh, we, are, we are so blessed to welcome to our services that Sunday morning the Lore Family, L-O-R-E, the Lore Family Gospel Singing Group. They were with us, oh, probably a little over a year ago. They enjoyed being in our church and the spirit of our church, and we enjoyed having them at Summers Missionary Baptist Church. They're going to be in our area. They're going to be singing at Silver Dollar City at the Gospel Music uh, Picnic. And so they chose to find out if we would host them again. So it's a joy to welcome them this Sunday. We're going to do things differently in order to give them time to do a good concert for us before our, our preaching time. We're going to start our Sunday morning service at 1030. So remember that. We'll, we'll get that out on Facebook and try to get the message to everyone. But be sure and remember that one week, or, or this coming, excuse me, this coming went a Sunday morning, we'll be starting at 1030, and we'll have a concert from the Lord family. Well, <clears throat> book of James, a great book, and, and this particular section, chapter 2, has to do with the reality of what we believe. That word believe is a great word. The root of that word comes from two words, which means be live or live by. And whatever we believe in our heads and in our hearts, it's who we are. We become what we believe. All right? So it has to do with practicing our Christianity. All right? And, and really, if we don't practice what we believe, then really, what's it worth? And that, James says that. Not necessarily in those exact words in the book. So this section is an interesting section. And, and you know, as I've thought about this over the last couple of weeks, as, as I've prepared these, these Bible studies, excuse me, it's interesting to me how timely this discussion and this, this lesson, these lessons are. It has to do with how we treat other people. How we treat other people. And in these few verses, about the first 13 verses of James chapter 2, James gives us some principles by which we can look at ourselves to determine how we are treating other people. And these principles go back to some doctrinal truths that we believe based on the Bible, the Word of God. And last week, the first one that we talked about had to do with the deity of Christ, all right? He says in verse number one, my brothers and sisters, do not have the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, all right? If you see Jesus, you've seen the Father. He said, I and my Father are one. John said, we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So it's because Christ is God, the deity of Christ. And as we think on that, it helps us to practice this truth or practice how we treat others. Well, we're going to read tonight verses 5 through 7. I may get further than that, but if we do, we'll go ahead and read the rest of that section down through verse 13. But the second motivating truth that we want to consider in our Bible study, first of all, was Christ's deity, and the second has to do with God's grace, the grace of God. Listen to these verses beginning in verse 5, James chapter 2. He says, hearken, which means listen, pay, pay close attention. Hearken, my beloved brethren, here's the truth, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, 
rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. He put that in a question form. All right, let's read the next word, the next verse. But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which you are called. So not only Christ's deity, but also God's grace. All right? This verse, verse number five, there is a word that leaps out, and it's the word around which everything else in those two verses uh, is built around. He says in that interrogative form, hath not God chosen the poor of this world? You know, every time I read that, I think about what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. All right? That doesn't mean we have to divest ourselves of all our material goods in order to be a child of God. It has to do with our spiritual being, our spiritual mindset, who we are. All right? Listen. In order to become a child of God, in order to be saved, the first thing we must do is admit our own spiritual condition. And our spiritual condition is, my beloved, is that we were sinners bound for hell. There was nothing good in us that would commend us to God. So God chose us not because of who we were, not because of what we had done, not because of what we were able to do, God chose us based on His grace. Let me read a couple of passages to you. I've got them earmarked in my Bible, and, and I'll tell you one's in, in Ephesians chapter number 1, and it's verses 3 and 4. Listen to these verses. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ. Listen to this. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. All right? So God chose us, and you can read more about this in Romans 8, 28 through 30. God chose us, but he chose us with purpose. He had a plan for us. All right? He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Well, there's another verse in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Peter says, We are elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, listen, unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. All right? So God has chosen us, and it's not according to our meritorious deeds. It's according to his grace and love. So with that backdrop in mind, God looked down, and he chose to love us as we are, to love us where we are, to love us who we are. I, I heard a preacher of old, I think it was Dr. Adrian Rogers, say one time as I listened to him, he said, God did not change us so he could love us. God loved us so he could change us. So that goes back to his grace, all right? So we're thinking this evening about the grace of God. Not because of anything that we have, anything that we are, anything that we do, or anything that we've done. So with that backdrop in mind, based on God's grace, based on how God chose us, how do we treat other people? How do we view people who are different from us? Oh, this is going to get good tonight, isn't it? Okay. So here's some just some, some great truths I want to share with you, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's based on this principle of God not being a respecter of persons. All right? First of all, I want you to know that God ignores national differences. I have friends 
who've been called and led, and they've answered that call to become missionaries in foreign countries. I haven't told this to many people. I think I've mentioned it once from our pulpit at Summers Baptist Church. There was a time when I was a younger preacher that it was my inward desire to become a missionary. I even knew what country I would have liked to have gone to. And for some reason, God chose not or didn't choose me to be called into a mission work and to go on a mission field. But I have friends who have. We have friends who now are called to go into different countries, different nations, different environments, different cultures, all right? And, and, and you know, I'm telling you, the only way they can do that is because God called them to do that. God put a burden in their heart to go seek out a different nationality, a different language speaking people to share the gospel, the good news with them. But then I look at us. And I look at us in the United States. And I look at us in the state of Arkansas. I look at us in the county of Washington County in Arkansas. And I know that we live in a sheltered environment. There's not very many times that we encounter that many people in our setting national differences. But when we do, how do we treat them? How do we react to them? I'm reminded of that story in the book of Acts of Peter. Peter was sent to the house of Cornelius. Cornelius was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. And, and God had to give Peter a vision, a dream in his sleep in order to see Peter through to the obedience of that calling. All right? So after, after Cornelius and his household were saved and Peter went back and, and reported it to the church, there were some of those in that, in that early church who said, oh, the Gentiles got saved, but in order to be one of us, they have to become a Jew also and follow our cultures, our customs, and, and, and our traditions. That's what they said, but that wasn't the Holy Ghost said, and eventually that wasn't what the Apostle Paul said. And if you know the whole story, eventually Peter reneged on that somewhat, and the Apostle Paul had to withstand him to the face. So, so I want to say this, and I mentioned it in our Bible study last week. We may not like to admit it, but there's a part of every one of us that's prejudiced. It's a part of our human sin nature. We are more comfortable around people who are like us. People who look like us. I'm not talking about in exact looks, but people who look like us. People who act like us. People who talk like us. That's the way we're built. And so when we encounter others who are not in our category, how do we treat them, all right? So he said, and, and he uses this, now we're going to talk in the next round about social differences, okay? Social differences. Well, he talks about the rich and the poor. He's already used this illustration in the early part of the chapter. In the early part of the chapter, if you recall, he said, let's say two people visit your church. One's a rich man, one's a poor man. One's dressed in great apparel. He's, he's dressed out outlandishly. You can tell just by what he's wearing that he's a rich man. And then the guy comes in in rags, he's a bum, he's a poor man, and you say to the rich man, you sit over here in the best seat, the poor man, you go hide back under that pew so no one will see you. If you do that, you're showing respect to persons, all right? So, so he, he embellishes on this, but it, it goes into who we are. But he talks about his own grace. Hath God, but you have despised the poor, or, or back up, hath not God chosen the poor, verse 5, of this world who are rich in faith. All right? So that goes back to that principle. God doesn't judge on the outside. God judges on the inside. Someone may be poor in this world materially, but rich in faith spiritually. All right? So social differences. He goes on and says, The poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom 
which he has promised. Watch this. To them that love him. Well, listen. But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? You know, I have known people in my life that I would have to classify as a materialist. They judge everything about their life based on what they have. They think who they are is relative to what they have. Now, I want to tell you, if someone is a materialist, all they think about is what they can get more financially, right, materially. If that's the way they are, that's the way their bent is, most of them are very miserable. And I'll tell you why. Their life is a competition. And it's rooted deep within them because they worship at the altar of gold. They worship at the altar of greed. And so they can't be close with anyone who is above them because they're competing with them. They want to rise higher than that person. They typically can't be close, talking about relationally, to someone who is below them because they despise them. They look down on them. I'm not saying all are that way, but there's a principle here. And the ones who are on the same level with them materially, they're competing with them. So I find that a lot of those people are miserable and lonely because they just don't have many friends because of what I just said. So this idea of, of, of social dif- distance, social spite, social despite. God says when you despise the poor and you have respect under the rich, you're acting just like the people of the world. We're acting like worldly people people out in the world. The whole point is, God chose His grace to save us. And we ought to extend that same grace to all, even those who are different from us nationally, different from us socially. And here's the next one. God ignores racial differences. We are to extend his grace to those who are different from us racially. Man, that's one of the most tense things right now in our culture. I'm a product of born in the 50s, raised in the 60s and 70s. I remember the racial tension in our nation of the 60s. I remember the riots. I remember the marches. And I want to tell you that that I, I believe we were making progress in our culture. But I want to say to you, as I close out this Bible study tonight, if you choose to love someone or not to love someone based on the color of their skin, and you don't make all feel welcome, and you don't receive those who are brothers and sisters in Christ who have a different skin tone than you have, I don't know if you're a child of God. I know we have to deal with tension that's in our world today. But it's all because of God's grace. We are who we are. And they are who they are. Let's pray. Father, bless us. Help us to be more like you. Teach us these truths. To not respect people for what they are, what they have, or what color they are. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight.